Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This week's video is gonna be super fun. I'm gonna show you how to do a resin casting properly, not only with beer, but I've got a keepsake that I'm doing for a friend. I'll show you how that works as well. I'm gonna bring you along with this crazy cool commission. I'm gonna show you how I cast and make the coolest gift for Joe Rogan. A company called Kill Cliff, they're a beverage company. They infuse their drinks with CBD. They reached out to me because they have a collaboration, a limited edition can with Joe Rogan. And they wanted to take one of their first cans that Joe approved and cast it in resin uh, as a gift. We're not just gonna cast it like the uh, standard beer castings. We're actually gonna turn it and make it to where it's a UFO shape on the top and the beam from the UFO is encased in the can. So it should be pretty interesting. All right, so this is Kill Cliff. This can right here is actually the first can. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. First can that Joe approved with this company uh, for the can design and everything. So so the plan is to do a base layer of color and we're gonna cast this in clear that's gonna be in the beam and the top's gonna be a green UFO. So it should be super interesting. Never done anything like this before. Kill Cliff and I have been going round and round for months trying to figure out what Joe would like the best and since he loves uh, UFOs and aliens and extraterrestrial life, uh, we figured this would uh, be perfect for him. So I'm gonna take you through the whole process of making the molds, what I used that has been super successful for me. We're gonna do the Joe Rogan casting, we're gonna do a beer casting, and we're also gonna do a keepsake casting. So it kinda gives you uh, an all around view on how to cast things properly without getting bubbles and to make sure it's perfectly clear. So let's get after it. Midway through making the molds, and um, we've got the uh, mold for the actual drink. We're gonna do one of the other Kill Cliffs, um, one of the other flavors, just to kind of give you an idea of how I do those. These uh, cans have a plastic sleeve, so I had already done one here and tested it out, but I'm gonna show you again how I did it. I just wanted to make sure that this uh, print wouldn't bleed into the epoxy. Uh, so we're all good, but I'll show you how this one works in this mold here. And then this is the mold for the baby's foot for my friend. I'm gonna figure out a way to suspend it. I think what would be cool, maybe cut like three quarter inch pieces and glue it down on, so it's like, you know, stood off the bottom and then the resin around it. I was gonna use some fishing line, but I really don't wanna drill into this foot. So I think the acrylic rod idea is gonna be the, the winner. Okay, so this is the, uh, the other mold. Um, what's important when you're making these is to account for the thickness of your material. So two of these sides are six and a half inches wide and then the bigger sides because they overlap are seven inches wide. That way you get a perfectly square inside uh, dimension. The top of this is going to be tapered up for the beam, um, but I'm doing it in this big pour. One, to test out super clear's epoxy to see how thick we can go and also just to give me a little bit of playing room when I'm turning this on the lathe. That way I get it perfectly centered when I'm marking it. Uh, because we want that can ultimately to be directly in the center, right? This is the first part of the mold. The other part, I'm gonna have an extension, basically shelf, that matches this profile. And it's gonna be, I think, 10 or 11 inches uh, in dimension uh, square. And then after we do the base layer pour of blue, we're gonna do about one inch. We're gonna let that cure almost fully. Then we're gonna glue the can down. Then we'll pour the clear, let that cure, and we're gonna have to put this in the fridge because it's a lot of volume. Um, after that's almost cured, then we can do the green UFO portion. So another thing that I like to do is uh, if you're just doing all clear pours without a base, um, I usually have the base portion to be bigger than what your mold is, just to uh, make it easy. I suggest you glue this down first, right? That way when you're gluing this down on top of it, you can center it much easier versus you you know, gluing the actual mold first and then trying to position this while this is, is all uh, stable already. Definitely glue the can down first if you're doing just an all clear pour. This is kind of how it turns out. The bottom actually works as kind of like a mirror, as you see in the Modelo. The bottom is open, so it's uh, not fully encased. So it kind of just depends on what you want to do. These are for the test, as I did over there. I just did them all glued down for the first time onto a piece of acrylic 
and it actually worked out really well. And you don't have to use acrylic. You can use melamine with Tyvek tape or plywood with Tyvek tape. It's totally up to you. This is just what I have um, on hand. But if you were doing a colored pour like I am with the uh, other one over here, definitely do this down, do your base pour, let it almost cure. I use the deep pour stuff for the uh, like the three quarter inch or one inch. It'll take a little bit longer, but it's like gonna be 90, I think today, 79 right now. So it'll cure pretty quick or at least halfway cure. And then you could do the, uh, do the can glue down and then the big pour. Another option too, if you don't wanna do a resin base, you can also do wood. My suggestion with the wood is to make your mold, glue your mold down, and then cut your piece of wood to fit in this uh, space to slide down in. Or you could glue your piece of wood down to the base first and then make your mold around it. I highly suggest that you uh, pre-coat your piece of wood with uh, some tabletop epoxy and let that almost cure. That way it's all sealed and you uh, reduce the chance of getting balls. Uh, take some CA glue and run a bead just to where it's almost on the top, kind of thick, and it'll what it'll do, it'll run down on the can cavity right now, but when you flip it upside down to the can, kind of anywhere, you let it sit there. Let me give it a little pressure. But as that glue settles down, it'll uh, end up sealing that bottom ring. Just make sure to use either uh, thick or medium thick and whatever CA glue you use. I use Starbond, it works really well. But you need to put a, a fair amount, not too much. I used to put it on top of that surface and just glue it down, but I found that it bleeds out. And then when the casting is complete, you can kind of see it. If you look on the bottom ring, get an idea of what I'm talking about here. It kind of just bleeds out a little bit, so. Just food for thought. And you can do a little spray, and there you go. Ready to roll. So now you can take your uh, actual cover, place it over, and either measure or eyeball it as best you can. And that's completely up to you on how you want to do it. I usually just eyeball it. Money. There's that. Now I'll take my acrylic glue. Give it some pressure. Oh, I don't know, 10 or 20 seconds. Now I'll take some uh, Star Bond. I always just hit the bottom layer. So I had this idea, um, I want to keep this verbiage on this can from, uh, from Killcliffe and from Joe. So what I, what I did is I took a, like a sample I made before, it's a little over three quarter inches thick. And the cool thing is the ta it tapers up, so the can actually, it'll give me location. I've centered it and already siliconed it down to here. So that gives me perfect center, which is really important because we're going to put it on the lathe. So I'll pour the first layer all the way up until just hitting the top of that surface. And that way, once this first, actually once the entire thing's done, I can take the mold off and then screw into the um, little sample there and pry it out. And that'll give me a hollow see-through um, channel to see the, uh, the verbiage. I think it'll work. Okay, so the mold is complete. As you see, I built kind of a shelf. I threw on some 45s all the way around just for some added up uh, support because it's gonna be a lot of weight. I'm gonna try and do three and a half, maybe three and three quarter inch thick pour in the green up here. So one of the main things that I like to do with these really important pours that have to be perfect and leak proof is uh, fill it up with water for five to 10 minutes. And if you get zero leaks, then you're guaranteed not to get leaks with resin as the viscosity is much thicker. The acrylic has kind of like a static 
uh, cling to it. So it'll have dust particles and things on the side walls. So doing the water test really helps actually grab all those. When you dump it out, usually you'll get almost all of the debris out of the entire case. Water test, do it. All right, so it's mixing time. We're getting ready to pour the uh, keepsake and the drink casting right now, as well as the base layer for the big pour. Uh, a couple of tips that I'd like to share with you that I've learned and that has helped me tremendously by doing these castings is if you're using a mixing paddle and mixing a deep pour, it's really important to also use a stir stack. Scraping the sides every 30 seconds or so really helps to get any residual A and B mixture uh, that's stuck to the sidewall. And if you don't, I've had it to where the actual casting won't cure properly because you don't get proper mixing. So make sure that your mixing is thorough to the company spec. With Super Clear 2.0, I go anywhere from five to eight minutes. And you can actually tell as you're mixing initially, you'll see striations of both of them mixing together. Once you get clear of all of those striations, after scraping the sides every 30 seconds, then usually you're, uh, you're clear to go onto either pour or degassing chamber. Just depends on what setup you have. There's also a pouring style that I like to do too, and I'll show you as I'm pouring. But what I do is I take that same stick, uh, I flip it around, that way you don't get any potential residue of just A or B on the stick itself. And I like to lay it against the mold, resting on the actual product that you're casting, and then slowly pour the epoxy down that stick to where it's like a slide. It really minimizes bubbles, and in some situations, not everyone has a degassing chamber, so that's a good trick to use instead of just dumping in and creating a ton of air into the epoxy down into the mold. So, um, yeah, you can use a fresh stick if you want, but I just like to conserve, so I just flip it around, clean off the other end so it doesn't drip in, and that way we get a clean starting surface. So as far as my process goes, I like to take the resin, mix it, get it thoroughly mixed, throw it in the degassing chamber for about 25 minutes or so, take it out, we'll pour it into the molds. I then take those molds, put them back in the degassing chamber, and suck it down for another 10 or 15 minutes. That'll suck out any air that's trapped, whether I didn't glue it right on the bottom. Sometimes there's air pockets that stay on this little lip. Um, it'll suck those away. With this can specifically, uh, it has a plastic sleeve, so there's gonna be some air pockets behind it. So it's actually uh, really imperative that I do that. I did it on the test one and it worked out flawlessly. I found that you get a much clearer product in the end if you end up doing it twice. If you just degas it one time, uh, you could end up turning out a really good product, but if you suck it down just a little bit more while the resin's already in the mold, then you're almost guaranteed to get a perfect turnout. As long as the ambient temperature is okay, or if you put it in the fridge, it'll be good. Lid off, resin in, lid on as centered as possible. Uh, the valve with the uh, filter on it, close it, and just let it rip. Sometimes you gotta give it a little pressure until it starts. You can see in the gauge. Once it starts getting sucked down, you're really gonna find that it's, it's gonna raise rather quickly, so you're gonna have to meter it uh, with this um, inlet valve. So you'll, you'll just basically allow air to come in kind of play with it until all the bubbles will finally just eventually go away. With a bucket like this small, I'm gonna have to monitor it actually pretty well. If you had like a five gallon bucket and you say you're doing a three gallon kit, uh, you would still have to monitor it, but not as much. So we'll see you in about 20 minutes. into the container. Okay, so this is immediately after the second chamber degassing. And it's amazingly clear, almost perfect. There's real small micro bubbles that will come out. Same with the beer, or same with the drink. Let's see on the top. 
<clears throat> so we're gonna put these in the fridge and I'll give you an update in about an hour. So the blue is poured just under the little puck there. I have it on the table saw leveled out. I want this to stay out here to cure quicker. Um, it is 85 degrees, I think. Yep, 85. So tomorrow we'll be able to do the clear pour. But that uh, blue green looks super sick. Okay, so it's the next day. Everything is looking fantastic. We're still in the cure phase. I'm gonna probably take them out of here um, so they start curing up faster. We're, uh, we're past the point, uh, the, the kicking point for the resins. The big one we'll leave in here for probably two days. This has been a little over, uh, we're, we're just coming up on 24 hours. So uh, I'll take them out and I'll show you. Okay, so we've got them all out. And you'll see those uh, kind of striations in the resin. Once we get through the curing process, almost all of this will all go away. All right, so we are getting ready to glue down first edition can. This is just hardening up to where it's still pliable, but it's not completely hard. So it's optimal time for us to go ahead and glue this down and get ready for the uh, second pour for this process. Okay, so I've gotta be super careful. Uh, I believe that with this marker, if I get any CA glue on it, it's gonna make it run. So we gotta uh, be kind of quick. There we go. Okay, here goes nothing. All right, six liters, looking real good. Just sucked it down again uh, while it was in there. Um, still some micro bubbles, but I'm gonna throw it in the fridge in a couple days. It'll be good. Stay tuned. Day two. Woke up, fridge broke. Fridge are still good, but what the heck happened? I think I'll be all right. We got retraction here on the bottom, but all of that's gonna get cut away because it's gonna be obviously a cylinder. Okay, so it's next to the other two, which uh, are, these are pretty much good to go. See how the lines are all gone? Oh man. But this one here, I think we're gonna be all right. Um, yeah, that's all gonna get cut away. I'm not too worried about it. All right guys, so after the fridge debacle, uh, I had to diagnose it. My neighbor came over and um, we found out that the evaporative fan uh, motor is uh, shot. So. I went and got one, replaced it. I think there's still something wrong with the fridge, but it's down in the 45-ish degree range, so I think we'll be all right. Um, I've already went ahead and mixed the green. It just finished in the uh, degassing chamber, and I've marked my line to where I want to kind of be at. That's about three and a half inches. Uh, we might go a little above it because there's going to be a little bit of shrinkage. But after we pour it, we're going to throw it in the fridge, and we're going to leave it in there for about three days, and then uh, it's turning time. Let's get it. All right, so this is the color I made up. It is iridescent green from Black Diamond. It's gonna be pretty cool when it's all turned down. So I went a little thicker just to give me some playing room with the proportions on uh, the UFO. But this should be super cool. All that's gonna get turned off there, so I'm not worried about it. Anyways, let's get it in the fridge. Three days, can't come soon enough.
It worked. Whoop, whoop. All right, guys, we are ready to roll. I gave this thing a couple weeks just to be safe on hardness. Got it all mounted up now. And I'm getting ready to uh, take the cuts all and shave off all the corners to uh, help me out a little bit on time. And we're going to start shaping this thing up. Let's go. There she is, Flamin' Joe Killcliffe UFO. Not pretty sick though. Okay, I got the first one shaped up, but I noticed that there was a lot of real estate on this backside here and I wasn't digging it so much I mean it looks fine I got the same angle it's about 15 degrees um, so I took the other one and I scribed it with a washer on the back side of the uh, the beam and uh, I kind of did this little curve detail and I'm gonna throw it on there show what it's like it's not perfectly centered but I think that's the one I'm gonna go with. I might even chamfer this edge right here in the back too. Just give it a little more detail.
Yeah. Thank you.